Hey guys, welcome to a uh, vlog style video today. Uh, today we're going to tackle the noise the new server is making. Maybe you can hear it in the background, maybe not. I'm using a uh, lavalier mic and that's pretty good at not picking up noise. So you might not hear too much of it. But as you can see in the back, I have a camera set up and I've set it up to four different points where I did a noise profile of well, the current stock fans with a shotgun microphone on top of it. And now we're going to install some Noctua. So I have an NHL-12S, which is a low profile cooler. I don't really need that for in this 4U chassis, but it's a good fit for the server overall. So that's what I went with. And then I have falling over a uh, three NFA12 uh, X25 PWM fans, which will replace the three times 120 millimeter fans that are currently in the front of the chassis. And then I have three times a NFA8, and those are 80 millimeter uh, PWM versions, which will replace the two fans in the back. And I actually got a third one because I want to try and mount that somewhere in the chassis to blow air directly on those PCI cards I mentioned earlier. They are quite tight together. Now, mostly this is to basically reduce the noise the server is making because it's mainly the 120 millimeter fans. It's currently not making that much noise to start with, but most often the noise profile of the Noctua is a lot better or at last, um, Maybe not quieter in terms of dBs, but uh, less irritating noise. I'm not sure how to describe that. And if we look at the current server, there have actually been some changes because as you can see, a few of the drive bays are now always lit up. And those now have three terabyte uh, HDST SAS drives, which I was able to get a hold of through some work connections. And those are 7200 RPM models, and they're a bit older, so they actually produce a lot of heat. And, well, we need some good airflow to keep it cool. So I'm still going to replace these current stock fans with Noctua, because those stock fans are really crappy in my opinion. They don't move a lot of air, and I really don't think they have a lot of static pressure to pull the air through the disc vents to the back. And I've already made a little modification to see if that made a difference. There is a little bypass ventilation hole over here. And I basically taped that off on both sides to see if that would change the airflow a little bit. So that basically forces the air to come from the front instead of being able to bypass the front and suck it in through there. So let's, uh, let's start changing this. No, wait, first let's... Uh, give you some quick samples in uh, four locations I did and then I'll do the same locations again and then we can compare it with the Noctua fans installed. But as I mentioned, I'm not only looking for uh, reduced noise, I'm actually also looking for improved cooling performance and that's why I've been generating some graphs using Libra NMS uh, of the disk and CPU temperature and we can compare that uh, well, once I have this running for a little while. Let's sing a song full of hope, full of pain Why don't you sing along, my friend, for it's our last refrain Forever young, ever strong, ever brave Memories like this never end, no, they don't fade away So when I'm gone, when I'm gone I'll be right there, close to the Keep holding on, keep holding on And I'll be right there, close to the sun Close to the sun 
So, I was just installing the new Noctua fans at the 120mm position. And as I've mentioned before in previous videos, as you can see down there is one of the well, hot plugs for the fan. And it actually has four positions, so it should be able to do PWM. But the fans that are included are actually, well, they are have a four pin connector, but they only have three cables. Now to control this, and I've showed you in a previous Intertech case video before, over there is the Molex connector that is used to power these fans. And then there's another four pin uh, fan connector, as you could call it, which uh, doesn't have any power connected. I tested that. But it does have the, the TACO and the PWM wire connected. So if you make a wire from here to uh, somewhere over here in the motherboard where we have a fan header, then we can read out the fans and actually control the PWM. But this little plastic piece was uh, giving me issues. So I've now unscrewed that and I should be able to reach the wires and uh, make the connection. Okay. And the wire is finally in. It's really a hassle to get it in there. Uh, basically, you need the two pins on the, well, not notch side of the connector. And I'll show you on the motherboard real quick. You can see the two wires go there. And if you look over there, you can see that there's a notch and that is 12 volt and ground. And then there's TACO because TACO is shared with a three pin and a four pin fan connector. And then the fourth pin is PWM. And that's basically what we need to control the fans. So these, this is just two normal DuPont wires. I'll uh, have them linked in the description if you don't have those or you don't know what those are. And although it's just a simple connection between two pins, it's really a chore to get them on there because of uh, the tight space so i'm going to build this back and uh, finish the fan upgrade and then we'll do some more sun tests All done installing the Noctua fans and, well, the Noctua CPU cooler. And, well, here you can see the 3x 120 millimeter. They fit pretty nicely into the caddies. I had to squeeze them in there and they're basically friction fit, but uh, they actually fit pretty well. So then I made my little PWM cable as I showed. And I also installed the 80 millimeter fans. Now I wanted to use these rubber grommets everywhere, but once they're this close together, that's basically impossible. So I used two screws and, uh, well, yeah, they're not going anywhere. Um, I used a Y splitter cable, which you get with each Noctua fan. So that's always comes in handy. So I only needed to use one motherboard port. And then, as a basically as a test, as I showed you before, I have the LSI controller, video card, and 10 gigabit NIC really close together. So what I did was I mounted this little Noctua fan here with some double-sided sticky tape. And well, yeah, uh, that's not going anywhere. And as you can see, it's not touching the card. And that's just plugged into another PWM fan header. 
So I'm going to start the server on the table and uh, show you that all the fans are working. And then we're going to do a noise comparison with the PWM profile in the BIOS set to standard to basically uh, give the best test. And then I'll probably leave it running for a day or two to gather some temperature data, basically the same way I did it the first time, and then overlay that at the end of the video. And then, well, that's basically it. Okay, so I'm using the internal microphone of the DJI Osmo. And the only thing I did was just set the fans to the standard or normal profile. And it's so quiet. Well, this is first boot, of course. Listen to that. It's just whisper quiet. I'm like holding the camera inside of the fans almost. And this fan is actually providing a very nice little airflow over this corner. And as you can see, it's not touching, so that's good. And the three big fans are also working. So yeah, I wonder if this is going to be enough airflow, but my temperature graph should show me that. And if it isn't, I can always go into the BIOS and uh, basically change the profile manually to suit my noise and temperature needs. So let's do the sound tests with it back in its original location. Okay, it's now actually the next day, and I finished testing with the stock fans, with the Noctua fans set to the normal profile, and then with the Noctua fans set to, well, basically full speed, so without any control using PWM. The PWM control works fine, I just wanted to see what would happen if the fans would run at maximum speed. And, well, the results are quite interesting. The stock fan comes in the middle temperature wise and the Noctua running on the normal profile actually makes the server get a little bit warmer but as you are able to hear from the audio samples it's so much quieter but it does run a little bit hotter. Now if there weren't these 7200 RPM enterprise drives in there but just the 10 terabyte eye removals for instance that would have been fine. But uh, I do have those drives in there and those generate a lot of heat and while well, using the normal profile, although very quiet, it's too little airflow to keep all the drives quiet and I saw some just peak over 50 degrees centigrade, which I'd rather keep them below. Now I've set the server to full speed and it's actually cooler 
and quieter than with the stock fans. So even if you're going to run them full tilt, the Noctua fans are still good investment if you're looking for better cooling and having it more quiet. Now, what I'll probably end up doing is uh, making a custom profile and having the fans run between 50 and 70 or 80% or something like that. And that should provide ample cooling in all situations. I'm not able to measure the temperature for the add-in cards like the LSI controller or the 10 gigabit network card, but I am able to measure it for the GPU. Now, without the little fan in there in the stock configuration, I would regularly uh, read 60 to 65 degrees centigrade. And with the little extra cooling fan in there now, it's about 40 degrees. CPU also stays around 40 degrees, but that's in the graphs actually. And well, it's all just doing really well while not making that much noise. It's right there. It's currently, as you see on the green profile, so it's running full out. And it's not too loud. It's a bit too loud for in this room, but that's actually because of the drives that are in there and not so much the cooling or the Noctua. These drives just expect enterprise cooling and well, then you have to provide the airflow. So I'm probably going to move this server and that will be an upcoming video, but I also have some more upcoming videos planned. I'm planning to do a video on Proxmox and maybe some clustering stuff uh, in combination with uh, Demotica and Home Automation, where you'd like to have redundancy, but you don't want to build server hardware. So I'm going to look into solving that a different way. Some other um, small bits of video that I want to round off about the disks and configuration, maybe L2ARC and some other ZFS and Proxmox stuff is coming up in a next video. And well, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I also have a Discord server. If you'd like to chat and join us there, you're always welcome and it's always fun. And I hope you subscribe and see you back in the next video. Bye-bye.